Even though we've known about this new Champions League format for a while, it still just feels like it's just come out of nowhere. Now that it's being implemented now in 24-25, everyone's just kind of like, you know, what the fuck? It doesn't really seem real, if you get me. My dad is a massive fan of the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's also a massive fan of a watch kettle never boils, but that's not really relevant here, sadly. Why have they kind of changed it in the first place? In my opinion, there was just nothing wrong with it. It's just worked so well for such an incredibly long time. It's effective, it's iconic and historical. I'm really just gonna miss seeing all the clubs on the final day fighting it out, you know, with all that drama. No one really knows what's gonna happen. Anything could happen. And that was what was so incredible about the group stages. But that's in the past now. And ultimately the new format will be similar, just not quite the same. So let's just just delve into the new Champions League format, how does it work and why is it being implemented? Just wanted to mention, why the hell have they changed the UCL theme? Like, that was not necessary. Nobody asked for that at all. Why? It was so iconic. I know it's the same, but it just doesn't feel right. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so instead of having 32 teams put into eight different groups, the new format will have 36 teams in a massive league table. Each side will play eight games, four away and four at home, which are chosen from the four different pots going from tier one, which has your best teams, to tier four, which are not as good. The top eight in this big league table will automatically qualify for the round of 16. But if you finish from 9th to 24th, you're going to have to play a two-legged playoff phase with the teams that finish from 9th to 16th playing the teams below them. After that though, that's kind of where I lose all attention. I cannot focus on it. I can't really understand any more of what they're trying to say. Does it mean, like, I'll be honest, I don't know. Does that mean that they have to play another two games? Because that just seems- Honestly, I'm already getting tired just trying to explain this. It's so long. It's outrageous. It's too much text for me to read. Knockouts seem to be largely the same. The only real big difference being that if you finish in the top two of that league table that we mentioned earlier, you cannot play each other until you meet in the final. If if you meet in the final, that is. Ooh, a lot of information. We did it. After listening through that, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. It's a lot to take in. What do you think? Not playing the same team twice in the group stage, like as it would be in the group stage, I mean, is actually kind of all right. It kind of means that there are more chances to see teams that you wouldn't really be able to see play each other more often, which I don't, which I don't really mind. It just adds a lot more variety and I actually quite like it. So instead of Bayern, for example, playing three teams home and away, well, they're going to play eight separate teams. It's just a lot more, you know, a lot more stories, a lot more things, a lot more involved, right? That was one thing that I like. And honestly, I'm already struggling to find more things that I like. It's, it's, it's difficult. I guess the league table, you know, the big league table, you know, 36 teams in one table, it gives you a better idea of who's the best teams in the whole Champions League, I guess. That's, that's all right. Right. But anyway, moving on to things that I dislike. This is in no particular order, by the way, just kind of, just kind of venting here, really ranting, whatever you want to call it. Right. So first thing is the two additional games in the initial stage, I just don't understand it. Well, I do understand it. That is a complete lie. The motivation behind that is more games is more money. But the reason I don't like it, because, you know, UEFA want to make their money and the clubs want to make their money and that is fine. But the reason I don't like it is because of the players. No one has really considered the players here at all. We've been asking players to play more and more games every year now, and it's just getting ridiculous. Like the amount of injuries we had last year, absolutely ridiculous. And it's only going to get worse with this new format. I know it's only two games, but... God, it just feels like it's just going up and up and up, like gradually. Because of that, one of those games is going to have to be played in January, which is one of the busiest periods in football already. And I think we all know a big reason for this was the Super League threat. All the big clubs, they were going to leave, along with a lot of the revenue and a lot of the money and TV rights. So UEFA has to act, which is obviously why they want more teams, more games, more TV rights, more sponsorships, everything. And that means that the Champions League is going to be milked for every last drop, let's be honest. Even if that means just completely sacrificing the integrity of the competition, you know, maybe we see some new teams introduced slowly, bit by bit over the next couple of years. Maybe even teams that aren't European teams, that would just be crazy. That would be a step too far. All at the cost of the health of the players, the experience of the fans, is it worth it? I don't know. And honestly, I think having eight games just kind of dilutes the quality of the games that we do have. You know, our players going to be as up for it, you know, then they're going to be more injured. They're going to be more tired, fatigued, it's not going to be the same product. It's not going to be the same level. And this will only benefit the teams that are super rich, can afford massive squads and, you know, just replace one world-class player with another. So will we see kind of Madrid, City, maybe Liverpool up the top, you know, the teams with the best squads, will they be rising to the top of this league table initially? Obviously, I could be completely wrong and that would not shock me one bit. But my expectation is that those teams with better squads and more money will just be rising up to the top. And now we can move on to how it affects the fans and it will have a big impact, let's be honest. Traveling to the away games is just going to be even more of a logistical nightmare than it already was. And it, it was already pretty bad. Now, if your team is playing eight different teams over Europe, eight, that is a lot lot. That's a lot of flying. Not, not many people can afford that. So the atmospheres might be a bit diluted. You know, if you don't have those core ultras kind of 
pushing forward all the chants and making a lot of the noise. Now, think about it, if your team ends up playing in Warsaw, in, in Moscow, in Lisbon, like that is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Football is a game for the people. That is like what defines football. It is a working class game. Anyone can play it. Doesn't matter how big you are, how tall, you know, whatever. It does not matter. All you need is a ball and you can play football. It just seems like though that we're getting further and further away from that with each year. God, and the anthem as well. What? Why? There's just no need. I know it's quite similar. And you know, it's pretty, you know, it's almost identical, but if that's the case, then why even change it at all? I don't get it. I really don't get it. It's kind of, it seems to be like this kind of whole simplification thing where everyone just wants things, you know, brands and companies just want everything to be simpler. You know, all those brand logos and things like that, like the Pringles logo, like what the hell happened there? Anyway, a bit of a tirade there. Just to sum it up, we're getting a lot more games, a big kind of confusing league table that is kind of foreign to me right now which is why I don't really like it. You know, fear of the unknown and all that. And just a whole lot of uncertainty around how this is gonna pan out and what the true intentions are behind this whole kind of reformatting. Don't get me wrong, I do think there are some good points here. I think the league table is an okay idea. And I think the eight games is, well, the separate teams. I quite like that as well. But for me, the negatives just really outweigh the positives. Champions League is supposed to be the pinnacle of football. It's supposed to be that creme de la creme, you know, the best against the best from each country. It's just starting to feel like another Americanized product though. I think a lot of people have kind of looked at football and realized that it's not as monetized as it could be. You know, and they wanna, they want a piece of that. They wanna, they think there's room for growth, which is why all the owners in the Premier League probably aren't selling their clubs. You know, they think there's gonna be a big up to. Honestly, over time, I think we'll just see more and more kind of minor, minor tweaks and changes. The Super League was just kind of too much all at once and they were never going to get away with that. I don't know how they thought they were going to get away with that. I guess they kind of banked on having the backing of their own fans, but that just did not happen at all. They knew that the fans in the lower divisions would not be for the Super League because of how much revenue and money it would take away from the domestic leagues. But they did it anyway and it was a massive overshoot. So I think they're gonna kind of slowly incorporate new changes now, maybe into the UCL, maybe into the Premier League and other domestic leagues, who knows? Maybe I'm being skeptical, but to me, it just feels like football is slowly being taken away from us. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below because I'm just really curious to see other people's opinions on this. And if you got this far, maybe consider liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate that. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.